It's an honor to have with us for the first time in many years, Director Ho Xiaoxian. So um, uh, I'll start with a few questions. Um, I think one, one of the, the striking things about um, director Ho's films uh, is that even when they're historical or set in the past, they seem to f um, exist very much in the moment. Um, and I think one of the ways in which he, he brings the past sort of into the present is just the level of detail um, and the level of realistic detail. Uh, I wonder if you could say a little bit about his approach to researching this period, uh, the Tang Dynasty. Nahodao 唐朝的东西留得非常多历代的记录不是很多 so luckily there are a lot of information being archived about the Tang Dynasty. So when I uh, first came across this particular Tang Dynasty tales or legends or novels in college, and then I found a lot of interesting stories, including the story of the, the assassination in this particular film. So to me, um, in order for me to somehow bring that realistic and also realism into real, realistic portrayal and all realism into this particular film. Of course, I need to went back into all those archival information and to do my research, do my homework. And uh, as I mentioned, that there are a lot of uh, details being uh, documented. And if you look into f f one, for example, it's called the uh, comprehensive mirror. Uh, to add in government. This is a documentation archival information that actually depict what happened in different dynasties and with different emperors. So you do uh, find information uh, about this particular period, uh, including dynasty and, and Tang Dynasty. And certain characters, for, for example, the Jiaqin princess, the Tianjian character, you will be able to find information very short, not and a very brief, very short, but very, very interesting details about these characters. And then I rely on these sort of historical details as a starting point to, uh, to extend my imagination for the rest of the, uh, the characteristic of the characters. So always grounded in some uh, historical facts and then go uh, above and beyond to create uh, the sort of fleshed out the, the entire character. Um, I was hoping we could maybe talk a bit about the the look of the film. Um, it's uh, the spaces that the film in inhabits, um, this, these interiors, um, and uh, the sort of the colors and textures uh, that were were chosen uh, for these interiors, uh, and also the exteriors, the the landscapes, uh, which are very striking in in the film. 
。那谈论一下这部片里面的所有的内景的这样的一个选择色调、质感，还有一些外景啊，像山水啊，和这些其他的一些啊户外的场景的这样的安排，是怎么样当初怎么样去设计它的？呃，内景呢，主要唐朝都是木结构的，木结构，所以它。木结构的东西，唐朝保留的就不多啊，因为木结构容易腐烂，而且他以前这个唐朝木结构的东西，保留最完整的都在日本。日本等于是呃，遣唐船二十几次，二十四次还是五次，我忘掉了。遣唐船，遣唐船就是呃，整个派一艘船，上面有各种工匠，也有呃政治访问啊。去到中国大陆，然后唐朝去到唐朝，然后学了很多东西回来，所以日本最早是呃没有木结构的房子，是从唐朝开始的。那木结构，它这个木结构基本上就是呃完全是卡榫的，它没有钉子的啊，可以拆。所以我本来拍这个片子在呃日本京都还有奈良。看了很多这种日结呃木结构的房子，本来要建一个庙，那个庙叫唐招提寺，就唐朝的时候建真和尚带着他的呃门徒呃一百多个人，去那边的时候他们自己盖的，那时候正在拆，他拆就整个拆下来，拆下来以后他换了几块可能是腐朽的部分吧，然后旁边就有一个很蛮大的一个模型。它是就像积木一样一块一块的，本来借我们要答应借我们，后来没有。但是我后来发现，其实他呃在奈良、京都有很多这种，所以我后我们后来到呃另外一个地方拍，呃呃就是原教士，原教士呃那边的建那边也是非常久的啊，基本上它的建筑都保留了，所以就是使用这个背景是这个原因，然后。So for the exterior facade or the scenes of the films about this particular Tang Dynasty epic, um, because most of the buildings at the time is actually built, you know, wooden structure. So not a lot of them actually survived because, of course, they dilapidated and then somehow became ruins. So uh, for me, in order for me to find that particular facade and also exterior structure, I need to actually when, uh, need to go all the way to Japan because that's where you can find uh, the best preserved uh, Tang Dynasty or Tang Dynasty influenced structures uh, around. And uh, if you look back into the histories that are uh, during Tang Dynasty, there were, there have been a lot of uh, trips been made from Japan to China, sending either artisans or sending ambassadors or government high officials to go to Tang Dynasty to learn how to somehow you know, build certain structures or some for the, the systems, and that's how they learn from the Tang Dynasty and brought back to Japan. So you. Uh, until current day, if you go to Kyoto and other cities, you will see still uh, structures being built uh, either in the style of the Tang Dynasty or that actually survive uh, for so long that it's still standing. And what they did for these wooden structures that every year or every other years, they will actually dis uh, disassemble uh, all these different pieces, the wooden pieces, and then they will replace either the, the ones that are need to be need repair or replacement, and then put them, reassemble them again, and then become the uh, this particular Tang Dynasty structure. So they sort of do maintenance and renovation um, uh, very very frequently. And one of the temple that I went to is actually built by the the t that a monk w along with an entourage of. Uh, uh, people from uh, China to Japan and, and and was built in Tang Dynasty and I saw how they actually disassemble the, all the pieces and put them all back to get, uh, together again and uh, it's astonishing and I was thought that maybe I will uh, shoot uh, that particular temple as part of the exterior scene but uh, later on that uh, he, they refused to uh, for us to shoot there so we found another similar ones in another city in Japan, and that's how we somehow bring the realistic and also realism depiction of that particular dynasty into the film. Then, you can see some of the 
譬如他大殿里面的内景，或者是聂府啊的房间里面的，这是我在台湾啊一个中影片场，中央电影公司的片场搭的，搭的景啊。我当初搭这个景的时候，我当初本来是想。去找一个建筑师，把这块工地设设计设计好，设计好呢，假使是大殿大的柱子，啊，这个地基可以柱子咔咔咔咔咔上去把它结构起来，啊，那你假使要改的时候，这些柱子拆掉，小的民宅也可以咔咔咔弄出来，这样，就是等于一个地基它可以。呃，像积木一样可以变换这样。后来找不到这个建筑师，找了半天找不到建筑师。要是可能的话，因为我是一直想把它保留下来，因为唐朝故事太多了，拍一个有点可惜。嗯哼。So for me, uh, uh, so that's the exterior scene. For the interior scenes, that whether or not this is in the sort of the, the imperial court, or whether or not this is in the Uh, the, the, the household of the, the protagonist, I actually set, uh, I built a set. Uh, this is in Taiwan, in the central uh, motion picture, this big lot. And then I, at first I thought I would want to find an arch architect to actually design this whole thing that almost like Lego, so that I can somehow, it will be mul uh, multi-purposes, and then if you somehow find a foundation, and based on that foundation, then you can build certain columns for certain scenes, and then you can somehow uh, change that to the sort of the uh, other scenes that involve with little houses and in, in the countryside. So at first I thought we well, want to make it more multi-purpose, multi but at the same time I couldn't find Uh, such architect to actually put this together. For me, I really think that if I build something that can be so sort of multi-purpose and also can be permanent, then later on there are a lot of films involving the Tang Dynasty then can also utilize the central pictures a lot to shoot those films as well. But I couldn't find a, not, an architect to do that. Can you say a bit about your um, relationship to the genre, to the wuxia genre, the martial arts? Um, um, maybe to, to you know, wuxia literature uh, and also to movies. Um, and in making one of your own, were there certain things about the genre that you wanted to, to, to honor, certain things that you perhaps wanted to, to avoid? Mm -hmm. 那既然这部片是一个武侠类型的片子，那你对于当初的像看过的武侠小说、看过的武侠电影，那在拍的时候是一直有没有这样的概念？是有些东西是要想要把它保下这一类型的电影的这样子的特色把它保留下来，还是说完全就是依照自己的方式去重新诠释它？呃，完全照自己的方式，因为我感觉我没有办法呃 follow 就是。那个我们传统的武侠片里面，它是不考虑地心引力的，它是人可以呼飞来飞去，呃，可以呃违背啊。我比较喜欢的还是呃日本的武士道的这种，为什么呢？因为日本的武士道到到现在，他们的道场都还在，他们还在练，所以有这个传统，所以他们那个能量其实是很足的。那。中国的武术，它没有没有这个呃传承了，已经没有失去这个传承了。所以我唯一的选择就是，你不能违背地心引力这件事。嗯。So definitely, I want to do a film based on my own interpretation of the wuxia genre, and the reason why I didn't want to follow the conventional、uh, styles of the wuxia genre is because. Again, uh, realism, uh, being realistic is、um, definitely one thing that I really want to make sure that I have in this particular film. This idea of defy gravity and people flying around in the air, it's just not something that I、uh, even contemplated doing. And I really want to somehow draw inspiration from the samurai movies from Japan. And you can see that as a practice, and then you can these people,、uh, a long tradition of samurai practices, and now you can still see people 
continuing that particular traditions and you have training grounds and training facilities still doing the, this type of uh, martial arts uh, practices. So I, that will be more in, uh, in line with how I see of Wuxia film should, should be, uh, Wuxia genre should be, uh, based on my own interpretation of uh, realistic depiction of human capacity. Um, can you say maybe say a little bit more about the the, the fight scenes, which are often a, a crucial part of the genre? Um, you said obviously wanting to avoid the you know these more fantastical um, effects and stunt work, um, but the the fight scenes in this film are very notable for their uh, their swiftness, which I think in, in some ways makes them even even more memorable. Mm-hmm.那说，呃，拍出像这样子到处飞来飞去，啊，反中心引力这样，但是这部片你还是很多这样的动作片段，看起来还是非常节奏非常明快的。那能不能讨论一下，说当初是怎么样去设计这样子的
，所以他们的脸部表情呢，常常会，会那个，会这样。所以我一开始拍的时候，一直一直盯着他的脸，一直提醒他。我说你是一个 assistant， 基本上是脸部是没有表情的，所有的动作都是非常短的时间里面你要判断的。光调那个脸部表情也调了非常久。And one thing, though, is about their facial expressions. Since this is something that they actually have to do realistically and naturally, therefore they have very, very human reaction to a lot of movement. They might flinch. They might sort of have very, very awkward facial expressions as they, are, as they fight. So those sort of things I have to make adjustments to. And, and that also takes a lot of time to find the right facial expressions to go with the action sequences. We'll uh, take some questions from the audience. I believe there are mic runners, so um, yeah, here. Thank you for this incredibly beautiful movie. Uh, one of the things that really intrigued me was the way that you shot frequently through veils and through smoke, and then sometimes you did action sequences way in the back of the frame, and I was wondering if you would be willing to talk about that. 他说的这部片里面很多是用到在布幔之后面，或者是那个纱布后啊，不就是纱或者丝对的后面，或者是在烟后这样子来拍。那还有其他一个呃很很有趣的地方，就是很多这样子的动作的片段，其实都是在啊背，就是在最最背在背部，不是在前景，不在中景，而是在背景的方式这样发生的。那当初为什么会有这样的想法去拍这样子的这些片段？最后说什么？你说背是什么意思？就是不是在前景或中景，所有的动作是发生在背，就是在背景，在 background。哦，嗯，这个我还是常动的。哦 ，OK <笑>。没有，因为因为呃，当你把那个 location 布置好了，你知道，布置好了，因为唐朝，你知道，唐朝是丝织品最发达的时候，是历中国历代。唐朝丝织品最发达，因为在呃唐人小说里面，有时候会有有一篇就写到专门这种养蚕吃桑树、桑叶，有没有养蚕吃桑叶的农民？这个叫啊蚕、呃，就是类似就是有特别规范的，你不能把那个蚕养死了，养死了是有罪的。所以他们那时候丝织品是非常发达。那以前的呃，整个建筑其实是就是一个空的，然后你，你那个榻怎么摆？白天是榻，晚上就变成加了很多东西，变成床，然后它有很多帐、幔啊，挡，有时候挡风，有时候挡什么，这些都是丝织品。那其实这个是非常好使用的，因为那时候在烛光之下，它的它的那个呃。反射是很微弱的，但是非常迷人啊！那个，因为我在拍，嗯、呃，海上花的时候，那些所有的人基本上他们都是，我们所有的衣服都是丝的啊。我们从印度还有从韩国买的丝做成的衣服，所以它那个油灯之下的那种反射其实非常美。所以我那时候想的是这个，然后我们搭的景是在户外。因为我需要自然的光线跟自然的风。So, in terms of locations, uh, since in terms of the、uh, the period is the Tang Dynasty, so I went back into what's famous at the time and the materials that I, the most famous、uh, during the Tang Dynasty is the silk. It actually, Tang Dynasty is famous for the silks、uh, silks they produce.、Uh, some Uh, archival research I have done has have found records and documents, and uh, to um, to say that if you are a farmers that、uh, for the silkworms, and when you feed the silkworms those、uh, mulberry leaves, and if somehow you kill and cause death to the silkworms, it is actually a punishable crime, 
at the time in the Tang Dynasty. So just to tell you that how serious it is uh, at the time in Tang Dynasty, this whole industry of silks and silkworms. So that sort of came to my head when I start designing all these different scenes to think about that silks has to play a very important role of all the, uh, the, the locations that I put together. As I mentioned before, the interior scenes actually is a set built outdoor. And I'm thinking of this as a way to have those, uh, the silk uh, drapes somehow divide the different spaces I want to shoot. And those spaces sometimes could be a living quarters and then transform into the, the bedroom. Um, and that with those dividers, uh, the silk material dividers, then with the candle lights, and then you can create this very, very enchanting atmosphere because of the reflection from the silks. And I already had experience about the materials of silk, um, how that they would look uh, on the screen. When I was shooting the flower shang flowers of Shanghai, we actually uh, got a lot of silk products from India, from Korea, and then those products and materials like this, they, the reflection is just the right uh, atmosphere that I want to create with this particular film. So that was the first thing I, th I thought about. And as I mentioned, that uh, also considering the fact that this, the whole interior scene is actually shot out, it's a set outdoor, and I'm utilizing the natural light, I'm utilizing a natural breeze uh, to somehow create an atmosphere that I want to create. If you can wait for the mic, please. Yeah, the visuals were like sometimes a minute and a half longer than the contemporary film. I'm just wondering what was the thinking behind holding the visuals so long? The what? The visuals so long, like particular scenes, they would hold the visual for like a minute and a half. It's longer than contemporary film usually is. In the, well, a long take. Yeah, what was the thinking behind that? Uh,用的长,就是长镜头,很久的一段时间去跟着这样子的视觉的这样子的描述,那是跟现在当代的一些武侠片或者非常的不一样,为什么有这样子的一个强把要用这么样一个长的镜头去表达? Rao 我感觉他们通常都已经准备好了 the reason, the choice of the, the long takes, and uh, it has been something that I've been doing for many, many films, especially recent films. And it has a lot to do with the way that I work with the actors and actresses that, uh, um, and these actors and actresses, ha we have worked together before. They know my style, they know how I work uh, on set. So basically what I usually do is to, they will, they will know the script and they know exactly the atmospheres and the feelings I want to, and the mood that I want to create for this particular scene. So there's no rehearsal whatsoever that they will come to the set and they are fully prepared and they know exactly what this particular um, sequence and this particular scene is about. And all I have to do is to s set up the lights in the way that I want it and set up the, uh, the camera with my cinematographer, uh, Mark Lee, and then I set up the dolly, the tracks, and then when everything's ready, I will then ask them to then go into this particular uh, set that I have created for them, that hopefully that they will be inspired by this particular location, uh, this particular uh, sort of mise-en-scene, and then they then can immerse themselves into the characters and embody the movements and the, uh, and the, the mood that I want them to create. So that's sort of the, the way how I uh, direct, and is there's no rehearsal. 
Uh, it's never rehearsal. It's based on that type of things happen naturally, since happens organically. And when sometimes they they, re, they sort of have take after take after take, and when they get comfortable with something, they start to become very, very mechanical and very, very awkward and unnatural. So then that's definitely not something I want. So again, I want to somehow change a different scene for them to start um, to react to the actual situation rather than have a preconceived notion of how they should quote unquote act in front of the camera. So that's sort of the, the methods and the long takes is something that will go very well with that particular way of uh, directing. 其中有一段就是田吉恩就是张震他去他的太太张震生气有三个小孩 So one particular scene uh, in this film when Tian Jian came in to confront uh, his wife and um, he was wearing a, wielding a sword, approaching Lady Tian, and then the children was defending the mother. And this whole scene, there weren't any rehearsals uh, to set that up. Actually, after the confrontation, uh, Tian Jian left the room, and I just kept the, the camera rolling. And you actually do see the reaction of Zhou Ying as, a, as an actress, and her character somehow then sat down and then ordered the children to sit to sit down and also then ask the, all the people to come out to clean up the space. So it, that is something that is not in a script, that is unrehearsed, and it just happened naturally. And to me, uh, that is something I really want to capture on film, is to see how people react in naturally in realistic situation. And Zhou Ying, as, a, as an actress, she actually in real life had three children, and I uh, instinctively, when I cast her, I thought that she would be someone who can actually handle this particular character. And um, I have never worked with her before, but you know, I really saw something in her that can somehow embody this character I want her to create. Um. I was very struck by um, not only the depth of your visual compositions, but also the sense of verticality. Um, it seemed quite different from your other films. So could you talk about your approach to um, the shot setups, especially with respect to the proportions of the frame? Mm -hmm. 构图上面的深度非常非常的吸引人那你们讨论一下说当初为什么会影响的方式想到自己怎么样去做画面上的构图去怎么样去做像有些的平比好像也有一些改变你们讨论一下这样子的构图上面在视觉上构图的安排我也不跟美术美术美术指导艺术指导讨论没有这个其实你说是怎么做到我感觉是可能就是常年的累积吧就是你自己有一个想法 
，其实现场是最重要。现场你有一种啊感觉跟判断，就是这样子而已。嗯，他绝对不是说是你要非常清楚的 design 的，不是，这是。其实我的电影基本上也都是这样，不管处理演员或处理 set setting、处理光，完全是现场。嗯哼。So similar to the way I work with my actors and in terms of the visual compositions, again, I I really wanted to happen on set, on location, and based on the feelings and based on the judgment and instinctive reaction I have, and I will make certain adjustments. So basically, what I do with the visual composition is I didn't really discuss with my art directors and what I actually have in mind. Uh, we have been collaborating for many, many years, uh, including art directors, including my cinematographers. Uh, and all I did is that on set, on location, I set up the lights, I set up the, the mood that I want to create, and then uh, I will make adjustment along with my assistant directors and later on to take a look at what, what we have and capture uh, uh, on the screen and then based on that to make adjustment. So again, a lot of things will just happen organically and naturally rather than have this preconceived notion or preset idea of visual compositions uh, when I make the film. We can take a final question, yeah. Um, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about your use of tracking shots in, in this film and in uh, Flight of the Red Balloon. Um, you have these really, really, really slow tracking shots, um, and it's a style that I noticed in the last two films. And I was wondering if you could expand it. The tracking, when the camera's moving, mm -hmm. um, it's not in every scene, but just occasionally. 对那个就是用拉力，就是那移动的这个方式去拍一些啊片段。那是因为之前很很很长的方式都是以固定式的啊像的方式来拍。那这次是怎么用？这个拉进拉出这样子的方式去拍，呃，这一部分是属于呃摄影师的，因为我跟他之前我是呃轨道用的不多，拍海上花，海上花是因为一场戏，一场戏一个镜头，所以所有的轨道的布置跟它的移动是根据演员的状态，然后演员的状态你会设计。有些动作，譬如他演员身边的海上花有很多，呃，我们叫现场的就是这种小阿姨，就是婢女啊。他，我会告诉他，听到哪一句话的时候，你应该移动去后面去拿那个茶叶。这个时候，这时候正好会引起。我说跟李平平讲，他移动的时候，你就慢慢就开始移动。移动的时候，那个对白正好到那个地方。整个都是设计的，啊，那时候很快设计的，所以有这个合作经验之后，呃，我拍这部片子的时候，基本上已经没有了，就是很简单，就是一个一个一个位置，然后李平平自己看自己摆，除非我有意见，我没意见的话，他就摆了，摆了以后他就自己拍了，我只负责就是把演员叫进去，没有吕后手就直接就进去了，这样的，他们自己自己演。反正拍了再说，通常就会 take 一个 take 一个 take 拍这样。So for the tracking shots,、uh, my previous films、uh, before Flowers of Shanghai, I tend to use very static camera shots, and、uh, then later on, because of the、uh, the film, the Flowers of Shanghai required that type of tracking movement, and that's the first time I actually start using or very very、uh, frequently using those tracks and dollies into somehow. Uh, move along with the, the storylines. And what we did at the time、uh, for Flower Shanghai is that I would tell my cinematographers、uh, saying that when you are listening to certain dialogue、uh, happens and when, for example,、uh, one particular courtesan said this particular line, then you have to move along with this particular character. So、uh, for Flower Shanghai, for each scene, I only take one take,、uh, one shot. Uh, in an entire sort of extended sequence shot. So again,、uh, because of that collaboration I had with Li Pingbing, my cinematographer,、uh, or Mark Li, that's an English name, and、uh, we sort of had this uh, uh, mutual agreements or a mutual understanding how I want、uh, 
uh, the things to happen. So similarly, I'm using the exact same way of uh, treating this particular film. Uh, basically, just leave it up to uh, Mark Lee to decide how he wanted to somehow move the camera around. And I basically just set up the, the set and the location, and then I call my actors and actresses into uh, the, the particular situation I wanted to be in. And then he just uh, have complete discretion to to move, whether or not move or not move the camera and follow certain characters, and then just through take after take after take to make further adjustments. Okay, that's all the time we have for, I wanted to thank Director Ho for thank being you. here with us. And thank you all.